Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church as we gather together here in person and at home online to celebrate the 12th Sunday after Pentecost and the celebration of baptism, which is always really exciting. Our opening hymn is hymn 376 in the blue hymnal in front of you. So in the blue hymnal, 376. Some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured 
as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in reading Psalm 81, responsibly at the first. Sing with joy to God our strength. I am the Lord of the God who brought me out of the land of Egypt and said, And yet that people did not hear my voice. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're old school again this morning. I have paper. My iPad is taking, I guess, a summer vacation. It just doesn't want to do it anymore. 
paper's good, though. This morning, Luke's gospel welcomes us to a formal dinner. Though it's a little early in the day for us to go to a dinner party, so perhaps we can imagine a fancy brunch. This is the third formal meal to which Jesus is invited in Luke's gospel, and there's more at stake here than our enjoying good food and hospitality. Luke's community would be aware of the undercurrents of honor and shame which establish the rules of the meal. What to do, where to sit, it's all determined by our standing and role in the community. But we are less sure. How do we know where to sit, how to act at this first century table? In our own time and culture, a great deal depends on the context of the meal. Honor and shame are still in play, but the guiding principles can be more subtle. A story. I had just started my new job at the Woodbury Forest School, an all-boys boarding high school in Virginia. It was my first meal in the formal dining room. I made my way through the tables in the dining room, trying to ignore the stairs, so much for slipping in unnoticed. We stood at our assigned places, said the grace, a boy at my table pulled out my chair, and we were seated. The serving plates were passed, and once everyone's plates were full, we waited. The dining room fell silent. I figured we were waiting for some signal to begin eating. We waited some more. The boy sitting next to me finally leaned over and asked me quietly, ma'am, are we going to eat tonight or just look at it? I was startled. What? He replied, pick up your fork. <laughs> I did and touched it to my plate and the dining room erupted as hundreds of boys started eating at 100 miles an hour. They were waiting on me. As the only single female working there, I was a guest of honor of sorts and no one could eat until I began. The whole year was like that, as I did my best to navigate the unwritten rules of honor and shame, how to act, how to be, determined by role and position and gender in the given society. The culture of the first century operated on similar principles of honor and shame. Those rules were deeply ingrained and understood. No gray areas. Everyone at our dinner would know what to expect and what is expected of them. But then Jesus addresses the gathering, sharing a parable that suggests a different way of gathering around the table a different way of being community. The parable suggests that we sit at the lowest position possible, so we humble ourselves before others. If we happen to be the higher ranking guest, our host will correct it. We sit at the lowest level possible to, honor, to offer honor to others. But Jesus doesn't stop there explaining we aren't to act with humility, hoping to be asked to a more honorable seat. That's not the point. Instead, we're meant to include everyone and understand that our place is alongside everyone else. Jesus is turning everything upside down. Imagine the fancy dining tables flipped over and the place cards scattering, completely ruining the seating plan. Instead, we're shown to a huge picnic table with no head or foot seating, just long, equal sides. 
and we jostle and squeeze together onto the benches. Jesus completely scrambles the construct of the honor-based economy. At God's table, the world's hierarchy is overturned. All are included, all are accepted, all are equal. And those gathered around God's table work together to build a more just and truly hospitable world. Can you imagine God's table? I'm reminded of our monthly brunches at St. John the Baptist Battle Creek, a small Episcopal church in a holler in East Tennessee. We'd gather around the plastic table in the single wide behind the stone church. And everyone would bring whatever they had and share with generosity. And no matter what was on the table, it was always a feast. So what does God's table look like to you? Maybe you're picturing St. Stephen's table where everyone is welcome and everyone is fed, even now when we are serving the meals to go. Or maybe you're picturing a more personal feast. After all, God's table isn't restricted to church. We all have these tables, the ones that matter, tables that offer true care, honor who we are, and gather around us all those we love because we are loved. What are the important tables of your life? Tables where you've been included, seen, and fed, cared for, and valued. Imagine those moments and remember what it felt like. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's the hospitality and generosity of God's table. Gospel tables value us because we are children of God and we are inherently valuable, worthy of honor no matter what. Today, we welcome another member of our community as we baptize Llewellyn, Tommy Cole's great-grandson, and invite him to God's table, God's own beloved. Friends, it's great to be at God's gloriously crowded picnic table with you. May we continue to find ways to make room on these benches and share with generosity all that is gracious in our lives. Amen.
Here's the fun part. So we are ready for the baptism. If we could have the parents and godparents and Llewellyn come up front. You'll need at least one of you will need a booklet. Okay. I hope you all can see his beautiful tartan. You were the first tartan baby we've had. You're out. That's awesome. So friends, we are at the bottom of page one, and then we're going to be out under infants and younger children on page two. You can come up too if you want to see. It's your choice. Okay. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. And then on page two, under infants and younger children, if we can have parents and godparents say that line, I present. I present Lillian Thompson to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing the child I present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers, give witness and help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which are corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey and ask the Lord? Friends, this is the question to everyone. Are you ready? Will you witness these vows? Do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us join with these folks who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptism of Well done. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Will you cherish the wonderful works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will, with God's help.
those person who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, but hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Way too much fun. All right, so here's how this works. We gather on this. We're going to need the well up here. And family, as you would like, you can come up. You want to see, right? I'm sorry, it's so tall. I have to stand on this step because it's up to my chin. I'm going to make it hard, right? Um, and the only place we don't want to block is right here because we're trying to make sure that the goes straight and you can see a little bit. So we got everybody who you can't see otherwise. Okay. I'm sure I know how this works. All right, so this is for you. It's going to be in the water, just like a bath. All right, we're going to do Thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of our baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Wait, those don't have to come out. There's way too many of those. Just the turtle.
you grab our candle for us? You got it? I need a tall, sweet, tall bill of flower. Thank you. We're lighting his candle from the Paschal candle. As the light of Christ is shared with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and raised him to new life and grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. We welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. And share with us in his eternal priesthood. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Great Thanksgiving begins on page 9 in your white baptismal moment. Please know, as always, everyone, everyone, everyone is welcome to receive at God's table. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the eyes. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the eyes. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, 
in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, and we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation. living bread given for the life of the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Friends, you may be seated. I will bring communion to you.
Lord's Communion Prayer begins on page 12. Page 12 of the booklet. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May there be peace within you today. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you use the gifts you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be confident knowing that you are a beloved child of God. And the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen. You may be seated for just a few announcements. Good morning. It's me again. Um, I'm Wendy Webster Coakley. I am a member of the vestry. I'm the vestry person on duty. So at the end of the service, if you have any questions or concerns you wish to bring to the vestry, I'm your person this week. Um, just wanted to uh, bring a few announcements. You see them in the bulletin, but just wanted to highlight them. Um, all of you Compline devotees, I'm sure, are doing cartwheels because Compline is back this Wednesday evening um, at 6.30. Uh, it's through Zoom. And those of you who have not tried this um, offering, um, uh, it will be focusing on climate as we prepare for the crea creation care um, liturgical season of ordinary time. So you can find that link um, on the website in the weekly email, or you can always contact Sarah. Um, I also wanted to raise to, to bring to your attention, um, well, first I wanted to ask Paula and Susan if they're here just to give a little wave, because uh, they are co-facilitating with Nina this fall's adult education offering, which is called uh, Sacred Ground. It starts October 4th. It's a 10-part series. I know it is something that we have wanted to do for quite some time, but the pandemic has really made that difficult. So this is um, really a significant time um, for us to be able to do this. So please give it consideration. Um, lastly, I just wanted to um, bring your attention to this little thing because I'm on the stewardship committee as well. So you can see this QR code here. Um, we're really trying to uh, convert, so to speak, more of us to online giving, uh, myself included. I'm still writing checks. Uh, if scanning a QR code or texting your pledge intent are not your thing, you can always call Sarah in the office and she can walk you through it. Um, I myself was, I've had house guests, I've been on vacation, I've missed several weeks, and I did write a very big check today, but... Um, it would have been better for the church if they had gotten my pledge on a consistent basis. So I am working on myself as well. Thank you. And so Sacred Ground is a faith-based series about race and faith. And it involves a lot of our own work around racial reconciliation within ourselves and then within our history and our community as the people of God. So if you're interested, there's a little pamphlet, looks just like the one I'm holding, at the back of the church. We'd love to have you. Um, if for some reason the dates and times we've selected don't work for you but you're still interested, let us know. Um, we just, we had to pick some dates. Uh, but we're flexible enough that if the group wants something different, we can do that. 
So please um, avail yourself of the pamphlet and see if that's something you would like to dig into. It's 10 weeks, but it's spread out really over the two semesters to give us time to do the work. It's film, mostly film, there's some reading, but uh, watch and ponder and, and do our own work around race. It's not just a, there's no quiz, right? It's, it's not intellectual learning, it's, a, it's spiritual learning. It's deep, right? So we learn and we watch and we ponder how that affects us and how we affect the world around us. So it's spread out. So we've given us the first semester's worth of dates, figuring the group will know better as a group what works for us in the second semester. Can we have a round of applause for our, our newly baptized Llewellyn Thompson? He is wearing his family tartan. It is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And thank you to his family and to his cousins and friends who are here who made this so much fun. We really are glad you're here. We, we always love to have you, so please come on back. We're actually going to have Sunday school in the fall twice a month. We're so excited. So if you're local, please join us and um, bring more joy with you. We'd love to have you. Our closing hymn is hymn 812. It's in the green hymnal. So in the green hymnal in your pew, um, 812.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.